Hi all, thanks for joining us here at Framework FX. Now today, we're taking a look at a strategy that I found online called the Killer Bollinger Band Strategy. And it comes from a YouTube channel called Prestige Options. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a link to their channel um, in the description below. So make sure that you go out, uh, you go across there and check them out and uh, have a look what they've got to offer. Um, so today, we're just gonna do it as we normally do. I'll explain the strategy real quick and then we will take a look um, at how it fared up over the last uh, 12 months in the market now before we jump there if you could do us a big favor if you could hit the like button hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell we're just getting going again we're just trying to build the channel again so that would be great let's get to it Okay guys, so here we are then. Uh, let's take a really quick look at the strategy again. As I always do, I will leave the link in the description. Go and check it out for uh, more detail. I'm just gonna quickly go through it now. So first thing I wanna uh, note, we're on the 15 minute time frame. That's really important. And again, as I always do, I'm using the pound dollar to back test it on. So we need four indicators okay as you can see on screen to make this work okay so the first one if you're using trading view you come up here to the indicators you click on that you type it in and that's how you pull it up the first one we need are bollinger bands okay so we bring the bollinger bands up here and we're going to use the very standard um settings the preset default settings in trading view uh, a length of 20 and a standard deviation of two if you're not aware what bollinger bands are uh, i'll leave a link in the description again for that go have a read about that uh, and uh, and learn that a little bit more we're gonna uh, we're gonna use two exponential moving averages and we're gonna have them at a uh, length of 365 and a period of 180 okay so that's really important and then lastly we're going to include an rsi and same again uh, just using the standard default trading view settings but as i mentioned earlier guys if you want to learn all this in a bit more detail go across um, to prestige options video uh, and have a look at that okay so if we take a look at an example here now this strategy has several rules um, that have to come together in order to generate um, a buy or sell signal okay so we're going to take a look at a, uh, a buy example here now the first thing we need to note is our exponential moving averages okay so if our slower um, sorry if if our so we've got if you look take a look at the color set our 180 exponential moving average is in this sort of blue turquoise color and then our 365 um, exponential moving average is in yellow okay so if our quicker 180 uh, ema is above um, our slower 365 ema then we are only looking um, for buy signals okay so if it's above um, if it's above that 365 EMA we're only looking for buy signals and obviously vice versa if it crosses down below it we're only looking for sell signals okay so right now we're only looking for buy signals okay now that's fine so if we just run it through okay there so we've had a move now so we're still okay to look for buy signals we're above that um, so now what we want to see is price to drop out below um, the Bollinger Bands which we as we can see here it has so then that's our second rule so first rule exponential moving averages are they the right way around yes second one is price outside uh, of the Bollinger Band in the opposite direction to where we want to be going okay and that's crucially important um, because if you go and do a bit of reading about Bollinger Bands what you'll find um, is that often it's showing you or giving you an idea of when price is overbought or oversold okay so this is telling us that price may be oversold um, and we want to be looking at buying it okay so that's uh, box number two ticked then box number three we come down to the RSI down here is the RSI showing us that it's also oversold um, below this 30 level 
here okay and yes it is it is showing that right there okay so now when all the boxes are ticked we're saying let's buy this okay it's looking good let's get in so you buy there now this is where it gets interesting this strategy and it is almost tougher to back test because of it it's a little bit um on you to decide where you're putting stops and um take profits okay so what you're looking to do is put your stop and your take profit at an area of support or resistance okay so just take a quick look across i'm looking at somewhere around here got a touch there touch there it's coming across touch there that looks like um a good area of resistance uh, that could now turn support so i want my stop um below that let's put so you can see it a bit clearer there okay so i'm looking at this i'm thinking it was resistance one two three then it's broken through and as you can see it looks like maybe it would be a good area of support now so you don't want to put your stop dead on that you want to drop it just a little bit below to make sure that if price comes through it doesn't just clip you out and then you know reverse straight off that okay so then you take profit you're doing the same thing um but sort of in reverse okay so you're aiming for a in this case because it's by you're aiming for a sort of an area of resistance could be here um i would probably put it here to be safe because two you get you're getting a two uh over a two to one risk reward there so i'd be quite happy with that you could if you were more risky or ambitious you could put it up there and aim for above three but i'm just going to pop that here for now and there we go so we'll be in this trade and we would just let it run okay and we might have been right actually with where we put our stops there because it looks like maybe it's bounced off that area and we drive up okay so that's the strategy guys um as I said, I'll say it again for you, jump across, have a look at Prestige's um, video, take a look at that um, for more detail on it. And like I said, I'll also leave a link in the description for Bollinger Bands if you want to uh, have a, um, a deeper understanding of how they work. Um, but if we jump across now and take a look at the results, we'll see whether or not over the last 12 months this strategy would have worked out well or not. Okay, stay tuned. Uh, just before we get to the results, guys, um, over at Framework FX, we run a copy trading service uh, where uh, we take trades and they open up in your account. It may be of no interest to you, but it may be of interest to you, so uh, it would mean a lot to us if you could jump across that and take a look at that. Cheers. Okay, guys, so the results are in, and this is what they look like. Okay, so as usual, I'll take you straight across to the profit. And as you can see over here, it returned a 16.01%. Okay, so it did return a profit, which is always a good thing. We're always happy with that. Don't forget it was on um, the pound dollar from July 2020 through to June 2021. Okay, so the previous 12 months. Um, so yeah, just on one pair, it's brought us in 16%. That, that's good you know we're making money uh, and that's a positive okay so let's delve into this a little bit deeper if I pull up um, our months as you can see it's a bit varied and I say that because we have had uh, one two three uh, four five six seven uh, winning months and obviously um, then five losing months and I don't know really how to describe this strategy as you can see if we jump across we took 35 trades and you can see for a lot of the losing months we really didn't take many trades so you've got May June here it only offered us one trade in either month and the same again in December and they were three uh, of our losing months so again you often see it and I often say it, you need to be giving uh, the strategy the chance for the edge to play out and if uh, unless it's it's a strategy that really um that really hits at quite a high win rate as in you sit around for a long time wait for the good trade or or a high probability setup to come and then jump in you are you, you're not going to maximize the profit i don't think and as you can see here we had a 48.57 percent win rate which isn't bad because there wasn't a single trade that i took that was below um, 1 to 1 1.5 risk reward um, which is good 
you know we're using a positive risk reward ratio there so that's always that's always key um, especially when you're, you're in and around the 50% mark uh, and, and most trades were sort of above that at two to one uh, maybe two and a half to one a lot of the time uh, so it had a variable risk reward and that's what's given us a profit with that kind of win rate um, but yeah that's what I would say it, did, it didn't offer us as you can see 35 trades across um, across the year so maybe this is a strategy that you take a look at and think right well can I pair can I can I put another pair in there maybe a couple more pairs and, and trade it so that at least you're taking two three trades a week uh, and maximizing that profit as much as you possibly can and, and as you can see July was one of our strongest months and we've taken seven trades there okay with a with a good uh, win rate so if we send that back, let's take a look again at this big um, mound of information here. And again, like I always like to mention, the drawdown. So the drawdown here was minus 5.65%. Now again, I would be really pleased with that. I always say anything below sort of, a, especially, I might contradict myself here a little bit, but anything below a 15% uh, drawdown I'm usually pretty happy with uh, however with this we've only brought back in 16% so maybe I wouldn't be as cheerful about it um, in that respect um, but again you know if you're not looking for huge returns and quite a simple easy to follow strategy you could double that to a 2% risk because um, yeah sorry I should have mentioned we, we were using 1% per trade risk here could double that to 2% your max drawdown might be around 10 11 percent uh, but you you would be returning 32 percent then so that's something to think about uh, if we take a, another quick look through um long trade short trade now this is really interesting so we took f f more or less 15 percent of our 16 percent profit on long trades okay now that's huge that'd be that'd be a, a real big thing to take a look at i would consider then going back i, I mean it feeds into the point I've just made where if you take a look below total trades, you've got 24 long trades to 11. So again, we're giving this strategy more opportunity to play out. Um, could be just the way the price action was at the time. Um, obviously, the from uh, July sort of 2020 down, we were still sort of in COVID time, especially in the UK. Um, so that definitely could be a reason that long trades would doing better as, as in the second half of the year we started sort of um, regaining a lot of the losses uh, in the in the pound dollar that, that we'd seen earlier in the year so that could be a reason why long trades were doing well but I would certainly say it might be worth going back and going through and seeing whether just taking long trades alone um, would have increased um, would it, well see how it affected the drawdown and everything else involved um, with that so if we send that back and we pull up days of the week now this I would say is probably the most fascinating part of uh, testing this strategy we don't we only really have two key days here the Wednesday and the Thursday as you can see they actually took in 19% so uh, again I often mention it it could just be that maybe Monday Tuesday we'd had the push that we were looking for Wednesday Thursday were the days where we were getting pullbacks and we were looking for entries okay that that to me would be a plausible explanation we were just getting in you know Monday Tuesday following the weekend the market was pushing in the direction we were having the retraces um, on the sort of Tuesday evening maybe, Tuesday day, Tuesday evening, and then Wednesday, Thursday were the days where we were just starting to look at turning that retrace around, and that's when we were getting in, and that's why um, them two days were so strong. Again, it would be easy for me to say, why don't we just not take trades Monday, Tuesday? I don't think that's the answer, um, but again, I think it would take some more serious back testing uh, over maybe a couple of a couple more years to see whether that was the case um, or whether you know it, it, what, what I'm predicting is correct so if we send the days back if we pull up now times of the day now again I'll rush to mention that 
I'm based in the UK or we're based in the UK and so we would only take trades or we would only look at opening trades from about 6 a.m. to about 7 p.m. in the evening um, so if we we're being realistic and we looked at that that actually had a 17.39 percent return so ever so slightly up on on what we got showing that maybe overnight's not the most profitable time for this strategy um, but again nothing major um, so let's take a look if you can see here then so six o'clock seven o'clock eight o'clock so eight o'clock um is without doubt our biggest hour and that's obviously on the uk open so what i would say is there's a good chance especially lining up with the days of the week there was a good chance that price was driving up monday tuesday we had a retrace maybe overnight on the tuesday night let's say it was coming back down and then on the on the Wednesday morning open at 8 a.m., price just took off, and we were in that trade then, uh, and we took off with it. So, or, or you know, um, seven o'clock, six o'clock, still profitable. So it could be any time around there. The, the, the price retraced, we got in, and then it took off. And um, that is what I would say uh, is sort of, sort of looks probable. Uh, and we haven't got much else to look at. Uh, two o'clock was obviously really poor. Three o'clock, strangely, you know, did okay. Um, but apart from that, this this strategy just didn't take tons of trades, which is strange because it was on the 15-minute time frame. Um, so it didn't take loads of trades. So we don't have uh, a lot of data, especially for the hours there. Um, but yeah, certainly as you can see, six, seven, eight o'clock around coming up to and including the UK Open or the London Open, um, we've done pretty well out of that. So if we send that back now and we pull up the visuals, it's not telling us many anything we didn't know. You can see that really this strategy has been held up by two slash three really good solid months in February, July, sorry, well, I should go the other way, July 2020, Fe uh, August 2020, and then February 2021. They've been the most solid months. You can see that there clearly. Compound. It's going in the right direction. It's not going particularly fast because, as I said again, we haven't had a lot of trades in that year um, to really start showing the edge, to really start showing that nice equity drive up um, that we like to see more often. So, what do I think of this strategy? I'm going to be brutally honest. I'm not a big fan of it. It's the first one that I've tested that I've really not particularly liked. So to start with, I would say, interestingly enough, because it's called the killer Bollinger Band strategy, you don't need the Bollinger Bands. And I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but I would say out of the 35 trades we took, there was maybe one, maybe two that I didn't take based on the RSI signal, if that makes sense. So every time an RSI signal came up, showing it as overbought or oversold, it was obviously showing the same thing on the Bollinger Bands, okay? And I hasten to say that because you couldn't do it the other way around, okay? So you couldn't lose the RSI and keep the Bollinger Bands because that would give you too many false signals. So you're better off losing the Bollinger Bands and just looking for price to be above them uh, exponential moving averages and then taking a look at how, um, at when, the uh, the RSI is overbought or oversold and entering on that okay so yeah, strangely I think the Bollinger Bands are actually unimportant in this strategy uh, what else I think the exponential moving averages are often very very good confluences for taking the trade because as anyone that's traded for a while now and for people that haven't exponential moving averages can often act as very good support and resistance so often you'll see price drive up drive away from the, the moving averages pull back down touch the moving averages and then drive up again so if you're seeing price drive up you're seeing it drop down if you get a signal on the rsi uh, telling you that it's overbought or oversold or nearing that level and it's you're coming up to a moving average i would definitely say it's worth considering taking a trade on uh, in and around there okay so that's definitely something i think that could improve this strategy and then also on the same point i actually really like the stop loss take profit idea of using recent um support and resistance levels to take the trade um on on the same point i think you could also use the moving averages as well as as 
additional uh, areas to place your stop above or below. Um, and yeah, so apart from that, I don't think there's too much to refine this. I, I'm not a fan, I'm not a huge fan of it, um, but as you've seen, it is profitable and that's great, and that's great for the team at, um, over there at Prestige. Um, I would say if you were interested in it, go away. I, I definitely wouldn't deter you from it, it just doesn't particularly work for me um, personally. So all that's left to say then is thanks for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you could like and subscribe, that would be really great. Um, we are going to start um, Monday morning forecasts, um, so what, what we might call Market Watch. So stay tuned for that. Also, as we mentioned before, if you could jump across and take a look at frameworkfx.com, that would really mean a lot to us. Um, and apart from that, thanks for joining us and uh, happy trading.